Hi, the next tool we're going to look at is a flowchart. So you may well have come across a flowchart before. The flowchart is a visual way, a nice visual way to represent tasks in our case, it not, not always tasks. And they have four basic symbols. If you Google flowchart symbols, there are maybe hundreds of very, very specific symbols, but there are four basic ones, one of which is the start and end symbol, so sort of a rounded rectangle, so flat on the edges and rounded at the ends. This is one symbol, but it's either going to say start or end in it. You can probably guess what they're used for. Uh, we have a rectangle, which is representing a task or a process. We have a diamond or kite symbol, which is representing a decision. And we have an arrow as well. Ignore the fact that it's a little bit broken at the end. So four, one, two, three, four symbols on a basic level. So let's see how they can be used. So they can be used to create a very, usually quite a basic project plan. So for example, let's say, so start always starts off a flowchart, always. So we have one arrow coming out of start. And let's say our first task is going to be to bore the tunnel. So actually drilling out the tunnel from under London if we're making crossrail. So we're drawing it, we're boring out the tunnel, drilling through. That's our first task, done, lovely. Now we might have a decision. So your decision might be, or your, your question, which, so always a question goes inside a decision symbol. And the question here, has a train been built? And this decision in flowchart should always be a yes, no, or a true or false answer. So it should only be one of two options based on LO3, we'd call this a Boolean choice. So yes or no, true or false. So has a train been built? Yes. If it has been built, we can start to actually teach the drivers. The drivers have got a train to practice on. So this task is dependent on us having a train built. And once I've been taught, we can end it. So we always end with an end. So we always have a nice clear start and a nice clear end as well in this very small section of our plan. But if we have no train built, if the answer is no, we need to go and do another task. So this one being actually building a simulator so they have something to practice on. Not, not as good as an actual train, but at least they've got something to practice on. Right, so just an example here. So the key bit really is how we're using the symbols. So a task simply has an input and an output. You know, we're doing the task, we finish it, then move on. A decision has got one input and two outputs in a proper case. Two outputs, yes or no, true or false. And all of these symbols are linked using arrows which show the order and show the dependencies within our tasks. Okay, so let's evaluate flowcharts. In terms of advantages, so it's really, useful to be able to see the order and the dependencies so clearly. We've got the arrows, we can see exactly which tasks need another task done first. The order is really obvious to us. It's also nice to have the ability to think of decisions in the future. If you are execute when you're executing a project as a PM, as a project manager, you are making so many decisions about what is going on and most planning tools do not consider certain decisions which will need to be made here, you can plan for potential questions you're going to be thinking of so you've got that idea ahead of time, which is useful. And also, the fact that it's very easy to see the order and so on lends itself to being easy for non-specialists to understand. Anyone can really look at a flowchart and get a gist of what is going on. So what is not so good is that for a complicated project, it becomes quite messy and quite hard to understand. So even for one that I just showed you had three tasks in it and that was already becoming quite messy. So they're not really designed for complicated projects. You might just show part of your test, part of your plan on a flowchart, not all of it. They also are designed to be sequential. So one task after another, which means they don't show concurrency. There is no good way or no proper way to show tasks done in parallel, which is not very realistic because most projects will have some parallel aspect to them, some concurrent aspect. And also they don't show timescales. So timescales are really important if you want to be able to meet a very common constraint of time, but they don't have by default any timings attached, which is an issue. So you may have to use another planning tool if you need to keep track of times.